Is FPV dead? Well, it kind of seems like it over the past six months. Where has GEP RC been? Guys, welcome back to the channel. No, FPV is not dead. It is alive and well. We're still carrying on this tradition of our hobby flying. And that's what this channel's all about. I'm gonna bring you more hobby reviews and honest reviews here on the channel. But finally, we have been waiting for something new from Gap RC for, yeah, about six months. The last Gap RC video you saw on my channel that was a brand new Gap RC quad was the LR10. That was back in what february it's now almost november and they were telling me for all this time they had a brand new freestyle quad coming out and finally this month they said hey would you like to review our brand new freestyle quad and i'm like absolutely yes please they asked me if i would like to do the x5 which was a five inch x frame long body freestyle drone with a gopro mount on the front 6s all the bells and whistles on there and with o3 this O3 one starts out around $429, which is considerably less than the standard O3 price from 2023. Back in 2023, we were paying around $550 to $500 for Bonafly O3s. Now, in late 2024, they've got them down to like around $420. So that's a lot. That's considerably cheaper. $80 cheaper at least on the average from last year. Now, you can get the 6-inch or the 5-inch which one do I recommend? I would recommend that you get the, the six inch. And the reason behind that is because it flies ultra smooth. It flies a little bit smoother than your five and you're gonna get a little bit longer flight time, but you have the diversity of being able to fly it freestyle. And then you'll also be able to fly up the mountain and do a little bit of mountain surfing with a six inch. And I, I think that's a lot of fun. You can put a GoPro in here. You can put up to around a 6S 1800 pack uh, on this quad and you can get a decent flight time with it. It does have a little bit hopped up motors for freestyle. So it is gonna get you a little less flight time than a traditional low KV motor for long range. But this quad flies smooth, it's beautiful and it just worked out of the box. And that for the longest time has been the greatest thing about Gap RC and companies like iFlight. We just pull them out of the box, fly them, and usually they come tuned to the props that are in the box. Now I'm gonna give you some suggestions about this particular quad. And again, like which one you should buy. I, I, I'm on board with the six inch on this one. Uh, I'm not even gonna mess around with the five. The five, if you wanna fly a five, that's fine. You can fly a little closer proximity and uh, not go quite as far. But for me, I, I'm gonna stick with the six in this series. And that's the one I'm stoked on. I also have something else to show you today, a brand new Gemini X receiver that has 2.4 and 915 on it at the same time from Gap RC. This is a brand new receiver. It is ELRS and it works with the Radio Master Nomad. So if you're wondering well, why can't I pair this up with my uh, boxer radio with my internal module, it's because you need the dual band module called the Nomad uh, for you to be able to bind up to this particular receiver. So let's go ahead and get started with a flight test. I'm gonna take you outside now. We're gonna fly something brand new from GAPRC. Finally, finally, you guys, we get to see something new. And I gotta tell you, this quad is super smooth. Let's go ahead and do some flying. After that, we'll come back to the bench and I'll talk about what this particular vapor is all about. Here we go. Just been falling to you. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, 
Guys, welcome back from that beautiful flight test. That was so much fun. Just such a joy to fly this quad. On the scale, it is 502.5 grams. That is without a battery and a GoPro, just the O3 and the motors and the props and everything. With a 6S 1400, that's gonna get us up to around 728.5 grams total takeoff weight. That's kind of the standard battery. And with a GoPro Hero 10 on here, that's going to get us up to around 881.5.6 grams total takeoff weight. Now, I mentioned iFlight before because they are pretty much the two direct competitors in the FPV freestyle and long range market for bind and flies. iFlight's been competing with Gap RC for almost 10 years it seems like and they both started out in like a little one uh, office type of environment and now they've grown all the way into much larger companies but what's interesting about this particular series the vapor and the nazgul eco series they're exactly the same price so if you want to buy an analog eco you can do that for 219 if you want to buy an analog version of the vapor x5 you can do that for 219 as well now, I know you're probably sitting there thinking, which one should I get? Which one is better? You know, Justin, tell me which one you would get. And well, I'm going to tell you that right now. Between these two, I do like that they offer a dead cat version. This one is only the True X version with the long body, which means this is great because you can get a giant battery on here and your GoPro. Same thing here. This is a little shorter frame, but this is a six and it does have a little extended length here. So you could get a larger battery on this one. But most importantly, I think for me, as far as what I want in a freestyle drone is a, a, a tough frame. So this particular frame, it has, uh, it has cutouts here on the top plate here. It has sort of embossed spots where the cutouts would normally be leaving that carbon fiber in there to give you a little bit more rigid top plate so uh, this frame does look and appear to be like it's going to be more durable uh, a little bit thicker as well for surviving some of those really hard impacts that you're going to have with a freestyle drone uh, and, and i'm talking about the same thing if you're deciding to get the x5 versus the x6 this is going to be a more robust frame than the eco series because it is kind of streamed down and meant to be a little more cost effective so don't sacrifice cost for strength now where the value comes in in this particular quad versus the nazgul eco it's the flight controller that's on here gap rc used an hd flight controller it is called the gap f722 hd and this is the version two of this flight controller the nazgul eco uses an f4 on there so it's an atf 435 flight controller with 55 amp escs on this one we have 60 amp escs and a better flight controller 
Now the X6 uses 2407E motors. These are SpeedX branded GEP RC motors and they're running 1750 kV. If you're wondering what the five inch runs, it actually runs a little smaller motor. It's a 2207E 1960 kV motor. The prop on here is a GAP RC branded props. They always include props in the box. And I did get two pairs in the box in this bind and fly. And they are six inch with a pretty wide cord, a narrow end tip on the tip of this prop. But in my opinion, you'd be better off buying some HQs or some gym fans to kind of upgrade this flight performance. And it may actually fly a little bit better and a little smoother. And on the end of each motor, we do have the motor mounted to the frame with a TPU bumper guard right here. It's protecting the end of the arm in those harder crashes and, and maybe some of those bumpy landings that you might have. And it also helps out with reducing weight because they didn't do a full size motor cover here. They cut it in half, basically shaving a little bit of weight off your frame. The wheelbase of my six inch is a little bit larger than you typically see with around 220 inch for a five inch X frame. This one is 254.5 millimeters from motor to motor. It is a two millimeter top plate. It also has a middle plate that is two millimeter and the bottom plate is 2.5 millimeter on the bottom of the arm. And the arm thickness on here is five millimeter. Now up front, we do have silicone dampening on the side, each side of the O3 camera. You do get some extra TPU dampeners inside the box that comes along with it. You also have some aircraft aluminum side mounts, which seem to be a little bit shorter in length from front to back right here. And we have two screws holding this camera onto these aluminum mounts. It does give it a little bit of frontal protection and it has an extra carbon plate on the bottom, giving it a little bit of extra durability for some of those frontal crashes that you might have with this quad. Now let's take a look at the length of the battery capability of this quad. You have plenty of length from the GoPro at full tilt to the back end of this quad. It does have more room on this one, so you can accommodate something up to like an 1800 6S battery. Uh, I'm gonna start out with a 1300, which is pretty much the standard size battery out there uh, for most freestyle quads. And even if I put this around dead center, we still have another inch between the GoPro mount and the front of this battery. Uh, plenty of room in the back as well. Now, if I slide it to the rear, this is where it gets kind of crazy. Uh, you can go full max GoPro tilt right here if you want, and still you're gonna have about an inch and a half left between the front of the 1300 and your GoPro where it can go full tilt. Now, if you want to put an even larger battery on there, I'm gonna put this one right in the middle right here, and that's gonna still, it's gonna leave us about, maybe about a quarter inch room there, but if I scoot it all the way back, here's where the magic happens again. Like if you're running a larger battery, even something as large as a 17 or an 1800, I still have at least two and a quarter inches between the front of this battery and the GoPro mount. That's huge truck bed. Now you also may have noticed that the power cord is in the front of this quad. I do like that the GEP RC ran the VBAT wires out of the front of this quad because it puts them far away from your VTX and your VTX antenna as well as your RX antenna in the very back of this back mount right here. Separating the two helps uh, clear up some of the RF and interference that you may have with higher voltage type quads. I think that was a smart move on their part. You might not have seen when we had this quad facing the side earlier was the fact that it does have this TPU mount inside here and it's kind of hard to tell what is actually there. But what they did was they created a mount inside here to uh, secure the camera cable coming up to the front of this quad, as well as a place for your capacitor to live right here inside this TPU mount. So if you have a super hard crash, that capacitor is not gonna kind of come down and uh, get a bent wire going to the flight controller to your, or, to, or excuse me, to your ESCs. And you're gonna have less chance of having it separate from the ESCs come off and cause a short out and a fire um, that's kind of a cool option that they put on there and that's a great option for fpv freestyle because some of the frontal crashes are some of the hardest that you'll see in this hobby now back here on the back of this quad is where the o3 lives and we do have an extended mount which brings it up off of the base plate and it gets it higher up off the frame which is kind of nice uh, you can see that these wires come from the flight controller here and it is a plug and play vtx this way if this gets destroyed 
you can unplug this from the flight controller and add a new O3 cable or O3 right to your flight controller since it is an HD version. And just underneath that VTX is where my TBS Nano is living and I had full access to the bind button right here. It is also likely that you're gonna have your ELRS receiver here as well. And on the bottom of this frame, you can also see that we have multiple VTX mounting points here. We have the standard O3 mounting and we have a little bit larger mounting system here as well as an even smaller mounting system right in the middle. And up front on this vapor frame, we also have a 20 by 20 mount option up here if you choose to put something up front. And dead center, we have 30 by 30, also 20 by 20 in the middle for different flight controllers and ESC configurations. So at the end of the day, I, I think it's going to be a little more robust than something like the Nazgul Eco. And this seems to be GEP RC's answer to competing with iFlight for the Nazgul Eco series. The Eco series, again, it comes in at the same price. But if you want to have something a little thicker, more durable, uh, and just kind of have a little bit more solid and robust and lengthy top plate, this Gap RC version is probably going to be a little bit better choice as far as quality goes between the two and the durability, the overall durability. Now, I, I think that the, the, the Dead Cat version of the Eco uh, from iFlight flies great. It's a powerhouse. But my experience today, like the difference between the two is that this one gave me a more subtle, smooth, something that an experience that I would, I want to have more on the regular. It's not such um, a hot rod, if you will. The six inch, it feels just when you, when you size up from a five inch to a six inch, there is a difference. It's strange. There's a difference between five, six and seven inch. And by the time you get to seven inch, it feels almost like an RC glider, like an, a fixed wing glider. It, it really is a big difference between the five, six and seven inch quad. So uh, again, I recommend getting the six. And even though it, it is a, a freestyle quad, you'll have the best of both worlds. You'll be able to do a little bit of mountain surfing, uh, up the mountain, down the mountain kind of flying with a GoPro on there put an extra large battery on it, and for around the same price as the Eco, this would be my choice between the two. Um, because the way I fly on the daily, I would rather go out and cruise. And if, if that's who you are, that's, you know, you're, you're a lot, most guys are probably like me. We just go out, we do some maneuvers, we do some fun flying, we do some flips and rolls and some tree dives and things like that. You might do a couple power loops, uh, maybe if you're not to that point yet, this quad can ease you into that and you can still freestyle a six inch. Uh, you could still give this to any pro out there and they could rip this, uh, a, a new one, uh, especially on 6S with 1750s. The 1750 KV is usually a little more than we would have on a, a long range type of quad at the six inch size. So you probably have around like 1450 or 1350 on some 6S long range motors for this particular size frame, uh, but you can, KV up and that's what they've done here a little bit. It's going to get you a little bit less flight time, but still giving that smooth experience with this six inch setup. So I think it's pretty cool. I would love to see that they would offer like a dead cat version. I know that's not like the end of the world that you can see the props in view with the O3 on board, but some guys, if you don't want to see the props in view, put your GoPro up there, give it a little more tilt and it's going to pull out those props out of your cinema view if you're trying to make cinema videos with a six inch uh, FPV freestyle drone. And, and, and most guys are just making freestyle videos at that point, but it has a little bit of duality. And uh, yeah, this is the one that I would get starting around 219, uh, all the way up to $434 for the O3 version. I, I think you would like it. It, it will uh, definitely be in the contender of quad of the year this year coming up. Uh, we should start releasing some quad of the year videos for each and every category coming up at the end of 2024, like we always do on the channel. I'm gonna give you my year end favorites. And uh, yeah, this one's gonna be a heavy hitter for the price, the durability, and just the overall experience. It's laid back, it's fun, and it's reliable. But again, I, I appreciate you watching. If you wanna check out our link down below, it does benefit the channel if you grab one. That would be super awesome. And if you have any questions, please do put them in the comments down below and I'll try to uh, get back to you about anything GEP, iFlight, or any other bind and flies that we've reviewed here on the channel. FPV is not dead. It's still 
very alive and still so much fun. Guys, thanks again for watching. Happy flying, and I'll see you on the next one.